who the hell are we? <laughs> Uh, have you ever heard of National Information Processing Institute? That's a dif difficult name, but in Polish it's called OPI. Ośrodek Przetwarzania Informacji. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, our godfather is the Ministry of Higher Education. And we are actually... Uh, we are actually doing them a favor because we are storing all the data containing information about Polish science, Polish universities, their structures, who work there, who study there. If you ever uh, wanted to have a grant for your, uh, for your research, you will probably use uh, the OSF system. And the next in line is JOTESA. It's Uniform Anti-Plagiarism System and the goals of the project, because this project has to finish with, uh, with the production deployment. So starting from next year, from January, all of the thesis, up to master, uh, will be checked in this system. So, all the docs, PDF, RT RTFs will be verified against uh, central database of thesis, from 2012 up to today, uh, against Polish internet, against uh, legal, legal acts, uh, court orders, and Wikipedias. Um, yeah, so that was the goal of the project. Uh, I asked analytics what would he think of that system. Oh, that was pretty simple just one or two use cases. For that, I told him, no way. And I will tell you why. Big data. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Okay, uh, the database I was talking about earlier, the ORPPD, so the repository of all defended thesis, up to master thesis, are stored in one place at our company. There are about two millions of those documents. We have also cooperated with EPPAN, which gave us the Next database. Next is a part of the internet written in Polish. There's about 700 million documents there. There's about 30 million pages from, coming from Wiki, and uh, some legal ads, that mar marginal number. So this is the data that your thesis will be compared with. Okay, some, some data coming from GUS. So a year there are about 300,000 graduates on any level up to master thesis. And uh, well, the system has to face uh, the strange situation when, when through the year there's nothing going on. But during May, uh, August, uh, May, uh, July, September, and uh, February, there will be peaks, like 50,000 requests to check your, check your thesis. So through the year, nothing, but in, this, in those days, like 50,000. Okay, what's inside the internet? As you may know, internet is garbage. For 700 million documents, there's a lot of useless stuff that we won't compare your thesis with. Uh, fora, e-commerce, culinary recipes, pages that are less than 500 characters long, clones, uh, erotic sites, which is major, and finally we come up with 300 million, that's about 7 terabytes of data. Okay, that's the Yotasa. You can enter it, it's online, but not everyone will log in. Uh, as the ministry said, only advisors can log in to check your thesis. So it's closed system. So any advisors in the room? Oh, great. Okay, what we give your advisors uh, is this. Well, uh, to say that someone make a plagiarism or not, it's, uh, it's ethically hard. Uh, that's why our system doesn't say that you made a plagiarism. 
we just give, give the promoter the tool to say that something is wrong with the, uh, with the document. There are some st statistics, for example, where you have uh, one word uh, document with uh, 100,000 characters, that's something wrong. There is also histogram. Uh, believe it or not, most of the words, except stop words, are just like f five, six, seven characters long. So if your, your document contains something else, it will show on the histogram. There are, uh, there's this PRP uh, number, which holds information how much of um, passages, of how much of the common parts are uh, with the other documents. And of course, we have data sources. We divide it f uh, into four parts, like ORPD, Internet that contains Next, uh, Wikipedias, uh, there's also legal acts and some other databases that uh, uh, university or department can define themselves. Okay, and uh, well, everything we find, we just mark. Like this particular, uh, this particular uh, uh, document, uh, it was copied from Wikipedia and there is this passage right here. And for promoter, promoter can, can check your thesis, click on the similar part, and get the information what, where, was, where was it taken from. Okay, and of course, uh, all of the universities, all of the public organizations require printing, some form of hardware, so we support that, that as well. Okay, main features, so it's really not so easy to, I don't know, to search the 10 terabytes of data in a couple of seconds to, to, to get the candidates that are similar with your document. So there are a couple of features within the system. Uh, so there's, there's this, this detection algorithm that just pinpoint maybe a candidate, but we are not so sure. We will make sure later. Uh, we are building and consuming various indexes upon which the search is made. Mm, we're detecting uh, common phrases based on two documents. Uh, we detect, uh, well, we detect differences in style. Imagine that you're writing a paper and you're just pasting someone else's work. So we have tool to say with some certainty that the other author is, is there, is, is writing the document. And some statisticals, statistical numbers that I were showing you before. Okay, so what about the candidates? As I was telling, there are around 10 terabytes of data so what do we do? We build indices, but how? I mean, just store every document there and just search for what? The business goal was to find clones and uh, long common strings between, uh, between documents. So that's what, we, that's what we store. We don't bother about one or two sentences. We bother about five and more, and that's what we store in indices. Uh, we use Elasticsearch and we use some plugins like MinHash and Bloom filters that will just prune the output. Uh, except we written our own LSH forest just to make all of those, uh, both of those, uh, both of those solutions work to get uh, the recall as high as possible. Okay, the segmentation. As, well, as I was telling you, each document is divided into sentences, five or six, six sentences that are stored in the index. With moving window, we are using, we were using two approaches, uh, regex to do that, or core NLP. And the funny thing is that you ever will work with both of them. Be prepared to have at least 200 gigabytes of RAM. For for you know, for such volume. The funny thing is that we uh, detected a leak in core NLP, 
and we written to the authors, and they just fixed it in two weeks' time. So that's a cool thing. If you ever have a problem with the library, just ask the author that will help you. And that's the example. Uh, by using regexp, we have a recall around 30%. With core NLP, we put up like 95%. Yeah, and this is the case where 200 gigabytes were maybe not enough for the regexp. So be aware. Okay, and uh, our our issue caused the core NLP to put the 391 version. That was us. Okay, next step. We have a candidate, so we need to compare it. Like you know, it's simple stuff. Just take the common part and mark it. So we do that in entities, where a part of entity is the part in the document, in the source document, where the passage is marked, and in your document. So those pairs we uh, we give out. And uh, based on uh, and. Uh, the sentences or the parts we, that which are close together, we just uh, gather in uh, clusters, so that in the output result you don't have like a sentence or two and then space, sentence or two or space. There's a whole block of it. Okay, the stylometry. That's interesting stuff. There's an assumption, because uh, there is no profiling of the author. You just have one, one shot, one document of this author. So we have to assume that at least 70% of the paper is written by one person. The other 30% might be something different. But what, what else do we have? We have engrams, we have stop, of, stop words, we have uh, some markdown, punctuation, uh, and based of, on the statistics of those, we can say that there's some kind of flow of the document. We can describe the document by statistics with those parameters. Okay, and then we are moving, and then we're taking a sliding window. So we're dividing the document into the parts, and we are counting the statistics with the same way, but the, only on the, on the part. And we, if we are, uh, if we find a large difference between those statistics, we can say that something is wrong, or maybe different author written the part of the paper. And there's some. Yeah, and all of this uh, is uh, done using sliding window. So we take the whole document, uh, count the statistic, take the moving window, and just move the window around the document to check if the statistic changes or not. Okay, this is fun, because we have uh, um, the database of the document of all the theses from 2012, which, are, which were defended. So we have a pretty clear corpora that is uh, well-structured, that has uh, very little mistakes, and by using Doc2Vec, we actually can point out the clusters uh, of documents that are similar. And here, for example, uh, we have, oh, nothing is, nothing is vid visible, but it's, it's pedagogics, it's sociology, it's uh, history, and there are technical subjects like uh, transport, uh, electrics, mechanics. So based only on that, we just made clustering with Doc2Vec. Okay, how do you think how much the big data, big data is? That's the question. How much? Is 10 terabytes a big data? I'm asking seriously. No, it's, no. Small it's small data. Yeah, and that is exactly what we came out in our, I can call it the research, because we have uh, such a volume and how to process it. Uh, we tried Redis, we tried PostgreSQL XL, that's just a cluster of Postgres's single Postgres Cassandra. 
and uh, imagine that one single Postgres instance is able to manage 10 terabytes of data in a day on a pretty, pretty fast machine, but it's still one node. Okay, and just to, just, to, just to show you this strange line, so where we, when we get the data from EPPAN, each package was loaded in the Cassandra like that. So there are about 800,000 milliseconds per package. So like package is like 500,000 documents. And there's a Redis, that's no, no, no brainer. And the Postgres is uh, the, the, the blue line. So that's how fast. So by having a cluster, I think that was a four node cluster, you didn't get anything out of it. It just like one node is as good as a three node or four node cluster. Okay, we have the ingredients, so the technologies. Uh, so there are two ETL processes. So all of the data that we have from ORPPD, from Next, from Wikipedias, we have to store in one place. Mm, so we need to transform it and denormalize it, just to make uh, one page with metadata in a row, just to, just to search it later for the comparison. The calculation engine, uh, the middleware services that connects all of the uh, all of the components, the front-end application written in Angular, uh, the querying mecha the mechanism which is given by Apache uh, uh, Apache MQ, and this is the ORPPD uh, transforming mechanism. Believe it or not, but data, uh, ORPP database is stored in the MongoDB with the file system. So all of this is transformed with ACA through the, through the Postgres database and into the Elasticsearch index. The same goes with uh, Next database and the Wikipedias. So the same, we have two large Postgres databases that are fed with ACA framework and the technologies used in IOTESA, or the Uniform Anti-Plagiarism System. So at the front end, you will see Angular. Uh, at, at the back, there's a Spring Boot with Java, ActiveMQ as a queue services. And at the, at, at the back end, there's a Postgres, there's a pure Java, and a Whitefly. So this, actu actually, this actu architecture actually uh, can make us scale. So uh, to fulfill this 50,000 uh, uh, documents in a day, we can scale uh, sideways. So we, have mul you ca we can have multiple uh, front-ends, multiple middlewares, and multiple back-ends. And that's how the, uh, the processing unit works. So, uh, text document come into through the ActiveMQ, and first the indexes are queried. So there are three indexes, actually four. Uh, one index is coming, is LSH Forest. Uh, the, second in, the second index is uh, Elasticsearch, that, uh, that are both querying the RPPD database. The second index is Next, and there are also Legal Acts and Wikipedias. All of the candidates come from uh, come from the indices into the into the discounting module that will compare two documents against one another and uh, split out the passages that are then counted and spit out into the front end and that's how it works okay so what about next steps because Right now, we are just at the brink of uh, production deployment. So starting from January, this system is online. So all of the promoters will be using it. At least the ministry thinks that they will be using it. But our next plan goes into two ways. We need to store the global internet. And that's like the whole different planet. There is a... There is uh, uh, the set called Common Crawl. It's like uh, 
two or, two or three terabytes of zip containing all the pages from all the world, just text. And there is also cross-lingua, because right now what we are checking is if your document uh, don't match or match with the uh, other Polish, um, Polish language papers. But what about cross-language? We don't, in this version, we don't have that. So the next step will be to do the cross-lingua with the statistical machine translation, uh, and that will be probably next year's project. Okay, that's it. And just a word of, the, of advice, if you ever, uh, if you ever going for the production, production services like that, with around 10 terabytes of data, there are a few pointers I would have to give you out. Uh, first thing is that don't always try for new technologies. They will always bite you at the very end. And if you are, if you are especially if you are project manager or team leader, if you are a developer, just don't be mad at your boss that you don't spend your time on big data or machine learning because that will eventually bite you at the very end. So the, all of the bugs will come there. If you have less than 10 terabytes of data, don't bother with splitting the, it out on the, on the cluster. I mean, it's another technology that can bring bugs at the end. And uh, last more thing, if you ever build a cluster, that's my personal experience, don't buy machines that have more than one terabytes of RAM. It's just useless. Just go with 256 or 128. It will be quite enough and much cheaper. Yeah, so thanks.